So, hi guys, what do tadpoles like to eat? Before I get into that, I'm not an advocate of interfering with nature, as you probably know if you watch my videos. However, you know, if there's, if there's um, a lot of newts in the pond, I'll leave them, even though they decimate frog spawn. That's part of nature, and I love newts as well. But if I'm in, because my pond is relatively new and there's not a lot of material at the bottom, there's not a lot of invertebrates swimming around, I've got a clump of frog spawn, and I'd like to make sure as many of them survive as possible because. You know what, human beings have pretty much ruined everything, so if I can use some waste food uh, to help them along, so be it. Now, I've looked online, I've done some research, I know broccoli works, so I've put two of those in there. But I've also seen other stuff. The absences here are things like, I don't have any spinach, I've got red pepper instead of green, I'm not sure if there's a difference. I've got banana, apple, cucumber skin it says, so I've cut that up a little bit finer. I've tried peas, peas and run at the uh, peas and beans. It, it doesn't mention, but I've tried them. Lettuce it mentions, kale and obviously broccoli. So, without further ado, let's put that in the pond. There you go. The eagle-eyed among you will notice that, as expected, and what I should have expected, is that the food floats off <laughs> when you put it underwater. So I've weighed it down with some uh, four-inch nails. So we will leave it now, move that left one a little bit lower so they've got better access, but I'll leave it now for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and have a look. Now it's probably worth mentioning before I look at this mess, is that all that veg, with the exception of things like, you know, the cucumber, banana, I think the red peppers as well, everything else was boiled and organic. So no pesticides, you shouldn't put anything near the tadpoles that's got pesticides. Now, the way I've done this is, if a tadpole swam up and sat on a piece of food, I would mark it down. And if it moved to a new piece of food, I'd mark that down. But my brain hurts from 10 minutes of this. I'm now gonna add it all up and then we'll go down the pond and see what's going on with down there and I'll give you the results. So if I take you back to the uh, judge's chair here, what an exciting life I lead. <laughs> so, that was quite exciting. If I show you the tadpoles, oh, the lettuce has floated away. It's hard to actually see the tadpoles because I've put so much food in there that the top's gone all murky and there's weird stuff floating on the top. But as I say, it is organic. So now I don't think this actually shows the results because at the moment there's loads on the kale and not too many on the one that came first. But Okay, so generally, everything went down well. Now, I thought broccoli was gonna win because I've put some kale in before, broccoli and apple. They didn't touch the kale or the apple and just went on the broccoli, which was steamed. But, I will get the piece of paper out. Okay, so we'll go, there was nine different foods, but only eight results because there was a tie, as if it, couldn't get exciting, more exciting, eh? Um, so last place in eighth place was the lettuce. That's in the bottom right, that one there. Not too keen on that. Um, it hadn't floated away at that point, but I guess it's not very flavoursome, is it? And that might be what draws them to it. So apple in seventh place, which yet yeah, doesn't surprise me. They didn't touch it before. It's that one there in the middle not too many on it now, but loads on the banana. Um, so tied for sixth place was in fact the banana and the cucumber. So here and these two here. I appreciate that actually, it's not that scientific because in a couple of, I actually doubled up a couple of them and obviously for passing tadpoles, that's gonna mean they sit on it, but eh, you know, so bill me. So that was sixth place, banana and cucumber. Fifth place was kale. Now that one is in the middle there and that's actually smothered now. So it might be closer to the top than we realise. Now, I, they weren't runner beans because I don't know my veg. My wife's pointed out that they were snap peas. So in here, the middle one there and the bottom one, you had snap peas and peas. Now they both did really well. Um, I don't know if I actually gave the answers. Let me just work from the bottom. So lettuce was 21 visits, apple was 25, cucumber and banana both had 32, the kale had 45, 
the snap peas and the garden peas had, so fourth place was the garden peas, peas with 52 and then snap peas did even better at 65. And now we get onto the top two and this is hardly surprising to me, but the, well, the answer, the top one is, but it doesn't surprise me that broccoli's in there. Now that had 68 visits and that is number two, not number one. Number one, that's the, that's the uh, uh, broccoli, those two there. Number one are these two here, the red pepper. Now there doesn't seem to be that many on it at the moment, but it was smothered earlier. And that had, uh, the broccoli had 68 and the red peppers had 97 visits. This was in quarter of an hour. So uh, it really surprised me because it wasn't even online. It said, uh, it mentioned somewhere green peppers, but I thought, well, I think they're just a variation in ripeness, aren't they? But wow, that was swarming. Now, as I look now, if I was to guess now, I would say the banana, <laughs> yeah, it, which is off the scale at the moment because there's tadpoles all over it. but. I did try and do it scientifically, and uh, that was the results. So, uh, what, what's my advice now? Um, I would say I wouldn't worry about apple and lettuce, or cucumber, or banana. So, what that tells me is the relatively insipid veg, you know, with not a lot of flavour, the lettuce and the cucumber, and the fruits. If, if you haven't got them, or, 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 and if you, ha uh, if you have and you've got all of these, don't bother putting them in because all you're going to do is pollute your pond. I would say the top five is what you want to be looking for. That's the kale, any sort of peas, snap peas, garden peas, the broccoli and the red peppers. So really, if we join the peas together, you're looking at kale, peas, broccoli and peppers. If you can put those in your pond, with the tadpoles you're you're going to make a lot of friends <laughs> i might i might go back on the banana because uh, as you can see it's absolutely smothered at the moment <laughs> that's that middle one there so i guess the the advice is chuck anything in as long as it's uh, organic there's no pesticides on it chuck it in but if you've only got you know broccoli or peas or kale or peppers, any one of those, particularly peppers and broccoli, are going to be um, eaten to excess because they're, they're going to love you for it. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a bit of a strange excursion, wasn't it, from the norm? But I just thought I'd finish with the uh, the bees. They're all out. These are Osmia rufa, are they? You know, my favourites, the red masons. And they're all out, uh, along with some parasitical ones as well. There's one flying around just here. Let's go and have a look at him quick. There you go. He's a nice fella. So I don't know if he's a parasitical or if he's a wasp who will use the, uh, the holes for himself. But the uh, Osmia rufa are all doing really, really well. So uh, they're all out finally. I was getting a bit worried. Oh, yes, there he is there. He's not getting fought off, so I think he's probably got his own hole there and he'll probably be going in it. I don't think he's looking for larvae at this point, it's too early. They've only been out a day or so. I think he'll be making his own nest. I have seen one before but the name escapes me but I think he's just, he's not being chased away so I think he's building his own. So uh, we'll finish there but thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll speak soon.